Following its dissatisfaction with the outcome of the just-concluded presidential election, the legal team of the Labour Party arrived today at the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Abuja to ins inspect materials. The meeting with INEC officials, which held at the Commission's national headquarters, is aimed at commencing the process of inspection of electoral materials used for the February 25 pres presidential election. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the February 25 presidential and national assembly elections, Peter Obi, has said that he is challenging the process leading to the declaration of the president-elect, Bola Tinubu, of the All Progressives Congress as the winner of the election and not the declaration itself. Obi called on the Independent National Electoral Commission to be transparent and allow itself to be scrutinized by the public since it is a public institution run by taxpayers' money. Well, joining us to discuss this tonight is Opunabo Inkotaria, a human rights activist. Thank you for joining us, Opunabo. Thank you, Jimmy. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening. Uh, well, some people have said that OB should not have even <laughs> taken any step, that Labour Party should have dropped the matter. Where do you stand? It is myopic reasoning, and I believe that those that are calling for Labour Party to just assume the idea of uh, litigation, uh, principally those that are involved in the rigging and those that are loyal to. I, I, I don't want to say president elect. I find it difficult to so say, unless until the court uh, declares it as such. Mm. I want to say those I neck, those that are in support of the person I neck declared as the winner purportedly not the uh, last presidential election. So it is within his rights to prosecute, especially when the so-called purported or the purported winner is a product of seismic corruption and fraud. I'm talking of this time around, I'm talking of electoral corruption. Corruption that will be stenciled on the metal sheets of unfolding the You know, before we got into this election, my brother, a lot of us had this rekindled group. We thought the democratic process, the healing of the democratic process, is being realized. You know, and the cancer in the process has been exposed. Sadly, what we experience is like a doctor who criminally, criminally neglected what he ought to do as a profession, excuse me, leading to the death of a patient. That is exactly what we experience in the presidential hmm. If you want me to go further, if you don't have further questions. I, I have further really questions, to... if you land. Okay, well, okay. Um, uh, now. I really want to elucidate. On it, yes. Because I now, see pain, really pain. Okay. But not necessarily to the outcome, because it ought to be a referendum of the people's yeah. expression, freely. But the process, the fraud with incongruities, corruption, fraud, and so it is difficult to accept such a process or to accept the outcome of such a process. And so we are, and I'm one of those, one of the over 100 million Nigerians calling for a uh, thorough investigation. They have to bore into the, into, into the beavers and all what is being used to conduct that election. They have to. Okay. So that if at the end, because it's not even the court's judgment who placate Nigerians. Because this is a glaring. Not even the court judgment especially against the background of Mr. President, who will be leaving the office in an ignominious manner. He promised to be to Nigeria three times in the election. And that's why Nigerians abroad flew into this country. They had end money to vote a candidate of that. Unfortunately, the president has delivered to Nigerians the worst presidential election, not even compared to that of Morrison. The worst of it. And the same president is saying the election stands. A man that ought to be neutral is saying the election stands. It's a shame. 
Okay, open uh, up. Lucas has raped for me. Yeah. With, 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 yes, with, with, <laughs> with a pregnancy of over 10, 10 babies. The other one had just one or two. Ten. So you can imagine if today, Jimmy, your wife is delivered of 10 children. You go be there. Yeah, okay. Well, um, <laughs> INEC, INEC has promised that they are going to give... Uh, the, full cooperation to Labour Party to inspect their materials, their machines, and everything that they need to is inspect. And the question that everybody is asking is, why did they not consider the cry of the people at the time when the complaint started, when the uploading of the results uh, was done uh, at that time? Is it not too late for this kind of promises that uh, people may not even have confidence in? Do you think there's still hope Our hopes have been dashed, dreams shattered, and promise of a better future should be great by a man that is an embodiment of contradiction, a man that no longer has any scintilla of respect. The INEC chairman can never be trusted to realize that it was all a high blood pressure of certain rhetoric and an enemy of concrete technologies. That was all played out. That was all manifest on the 25th of February, 2022. That was the day the nation, Nigeria, were lashed into a state of victimhood by political buccaneers. No Nigeria, not, not even the APC, I make read would trust you. You know, I'll tell you something. This is hypothetical. I'm not calling anybody a thief. If you have a friend that is a thief, and that friend, whenever he comes up, let's say you have a gossip as a friend, whatever happens to another person, he comes to tell you. You, who is his friend, will never want to tell him any secret because you know that he will also go and tell someone. So even the APC members will not want a man like Professor Mahmoud Yakub to, uh, uh, would not even believe a man like Professor Mahmoud Yakub because you can't, look at, look at the beavers. I didn't, up till now, do you know that they've not really come out to give any explanation? Let's take the issues under advisement. First and foremost, you collected over how many billions? We are not denied a cobble, not even a cobble. Even when they came up with this brilliant policy, but with very stupid implementation. When Nigerians were groaning, the cash crunch was hitting hard. Patients were dying in the hospital. Family and uh, fathers could no longer run their homes. I met, I mean, uh, Central Bank released money to I met. The INEC chairman himself made this uh, confession, confirmation. What happened eventually? We saw in Lagos, we are, let me start with the issue of a man that was supposed to convey materials. He went and took Tinibu's loyalists, non loyalists. So you see, the Soti Limo, or C Limo, I don't know, I can't even I don't know what the noise is. In Lagos State, the road safety, uh, sorry, road uh, transport workers. <clears throat> yes, to convey sensitive materials until the court stopped it. Nigerians cried that they went to court, the court stopped it. Why will you, knowing too well his relationship with uh, the APC presidential candidate, why will you, knowing too well, go ahead to contract it? to convey electoral materials. That was where we smelt the rights. Now, let us also go to the beavers. First and foremost, unless the courts, most of us don't really have faith in our courts, especially when you look at the Lawans, uh, the senior president uh, election, and also Akmadi, even before then. So we don't have faith in the courts anymore. Anymore. Now, let us go further. You said the beavers. You gave Nigerians all the assurances. Now they are saying glitches, technicalities, all 
Hong Kong. He gave Nigerians all assurances. There were mock trials of the beavers. Before the mock trials, these same beavers were used in our show and so on. And on that day, the beavers worked for the National Assembly. You see how rationally inexplicable this is. It worked for the National Assembly, uh, 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 refs and senate, suddenly had issues with the presidential. How do you explain that? Now, what did the electoral lab say? The electoral lab has made it mandatory because you must compare the results with the results in the viewers. Was that done? It was not done. Even when Dina and Co objected, he went ahead and said, you can go to court. Which means, what that means, because they say meaning is not in the message, but in the message book. What that is telling Nigeria is that we have bought the court. So that it is my right to interpret. Once you say a word, the word once spoken is passed to court. It's my right to interpret. So that's why they say you choose the right words from the word past. All words are in the past. Choose the right word. Not when you say it, you say, no, this is what I meant. Rubbish. You said they should go to court. Meanwhile, the electoral act provides, you have enough provision to extend those two documents. Or extend. You refuse. You went ahead. These same INET guidelines were provided by you. I'm talking of INET itself. Led by the chairman. Provided by you. You went against your guidelines. Because now that day, they had not uploaded. And it says that even in your bedroom, you can sit down and know who is winning and who will eventually be the winner. Because you uploaded. They did not. One week, almost two weeks after, not in the server, later they came back to say uh, they are working on the server. Now they've gone to court to tell the court we have a backup because they want to inspect the business. Looking for all means to cover up the fraud spearheaded by the election. So nobody, no right thinking member or Nigerian will believe a word from the INF chairman in the moment. No. I'm just curious. He has lost his credibility with this last uh, let me let me play he respected the respected him so much. He was respected, he was revered. But he has lost even a shred of that that was from Nigerians. He will see what will happen when he meets office. He will see how he'll be despised and treated like a leper. Well, no, we'll, no, we'll, no, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for the courts. Swelly. We'll wait for the courts to make pronouncements. Open our Sorry? We'll, we'll wait for the courts to make some pronouncements, then we'll know whether uh, he's on the right or on no, the no, wrong. No, 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 no. But, no, but let me just, let the me just... Law, the rule of law in this country has been changed, and they have reserved just a ground this on time. Let me just play the devil's advocate if here. If you want me, I can mention a plethora of things, but for lack of time, that's why it's be trying yeah. to shorten and abridge a lot of things. But yeah. I would not have faith in the Supreme Court anymore. Who don't have faith in the Supreme Court anymore? So are you so saying we don't have any hope? Because if the Supreme Court is not something that we can rely on, that's the last hope of the common man. What else do we have to do? We'll have to have faith in the Supreme Court, at least some kind of faith. No, now no, that no, the Labour no, Party no, no, has no, gone no, to court. No, 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 no. It is it ought to be the temple of justice. And that's why they are referred to as Milot. Where else can we get the justice? They are like gods on earth. What they say, and that's why when people go against Supreme Court judgment, for example, the Naira confiscation, I don't want to call it Naira swap, because you take my Naira and I can't have access to it, you confiscate it. That's why when they go against the Supreme Court judgment, that's when I say fine. But to an extent, too, that uh, impunity is being led by the president himself. If you ask me, I can tell you from the case of Dasubi, from the case of the Kano, and so on, even up to this Naira. Supposed Naira swap issue. We had the Supreme Court give a judgment uh, uh, that they should stay action, pending whether to look into the matter. And the president, holding the court in this day, came up to say uh, 200 Naira and 500 or whatever he said. That was wrong. That was contrary. But uh, the abuse of unity. And that's why I said, look, immunity. And yes, I agree, no problem. But then, there should be a clause 
to the immunity club, an, an addition to the immunity club. And what is that addition? That anybody who violates the Supreme Court order or judgment should be impeached. It should be an impeachable offense. Because let me tell you the truth. It will lead to anarchy. How do you expect Machina to feel? You're saying we must. There is no must in this world. How do you expect Machina to feel? How do you expect the man who contested against Akabia to feel? They did not contest in any primary. Even if APC had said that there was, first, you cannot contest for two well, offices. Well, let let, let me get this right. Let me get this right. Yeah. Um, yes. Even though uh, our, our president and the governors have uh, immunity, does the law say they can never be impeached? Because I've, I've no, seen, no, no, I've no, seen no, situations excuse where... Me, excuse me. No, yes. excuse me. Let, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is this. If, for example, now, like, let's say like the Naira Swap, mm. or fraudulent Naira Swap, because what is a swap? I give you this, you give me that. That's what it means. Now I give you, and I don't get it. So what is that confiscation? So the point I'm trying to make is this. When the Supreme Court gives an order, I'm talking about the truth. What I'm trying to do is preserve the integrity of the Supreme Court. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not talking about the High Court, because you have the High Court, you have the Court of Appeal, you have the Supreme Court. When the Supreme Court gives an order, if a president, because it's not part of it, you can impeach. But there are also grounds for impeachment before removal. Mm. You know, there are two different things. Yeah. Most times they mix it up. Impeachment is not removal. Yeah. Impeachment leads to removal. Yeah, there are two things, two different things. So now, there are, what I'm saying, there are grounds already as enshrined in our constitution. But the point I'm making is, if a court, just like now the court has said until December 31st, the president has not said anything, the central bank has not said anything, and as a result of that, while the money is still a legal tender, that is coming from the Supreme Court, the enforcement is a problem. That is when the judiciary comes to. And if you use the old tender, nobody, nobody collects from you. So it makes no difference. The banks now dispense the old currency. No, it's the, sorry, the, the, the currency, but the Supreme Court has spoken. And the market women refuse to accept. So what do you do? They are waiting. They say, we want to hear from Mr. President. And the man thinks it's clever by remaining silent so that the, the CBM policy will continue. That's why he signed it. <clears throat> so the point I'm making is, on such issues, such issues rather, should be impeachable offenses. Otherwise, there are other grounds for impeachment, but, but clearly spelled out in our Constitution. But I'm saying such issues, like disobedience of Supreme Court order, this should be. And I tell you, most of, uh, most of these uh, 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 presidents and governors who see themselves as demigods and so We'll think um, again. We'll think twice. Okay, right now we are because we're, we're that blaming. will be a ground for the National Assembly to move for impeachment, and it will, you have to call in the the chief, the chief judges and so or who will set up a panel and so, and because they want to regain their integrity, they will quickly do so. Just, the just, the just state briefly now. Oh, state okay. levels are just ministry of lawmaking. They are not assembly. Of just, 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 just a moment. Just a moment, so that we don't yes. digress. Um, whatever we're saying okay. about INEC right now, uh, we should also have it in mind that whatever we're saying, there are lessons that need to be learned. For instance, when you mentioned that MCO Luomo was contracted in Lagos to convey the materials to the various polling units, I understand that nationwide NURTW was contracted to do that. And in Lagos State, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it is led by this MCO Luomo. What alternatives did you think INEC should have had at that moment so that when they are planning yes. for the next election, they can do that? Okay. I'll ask, I'll answer. One will be a rhetorical question, and the other one will be an answer, a direct answer. I gather that the union is divided as a result of um, the high handedness of MC Olomu. I think that's, that's his name. Olomu. Oluomo. Yeah? Please correct me. <laughs> MC Oluomo. Oluomo. Uh, uh, MC Oluomo. Why didn't you go for the other faction? 
That is one. So, so that, that, is, that is number one. The rhetorical question is, when the court interdicted him, that stopped him, how did he convey the material? Why did you think of that? Go to the number. Onoche, a die-hard member of APC and strong ally supporter of uh, Buari, when they were elected, uh, appointed into INF, what did he say? He said no. To be back. You see, it was Justice Hewitt who said, justice must not only be done, but must be seen to have been manifestly done. If the common man on the streets, not just the litigators, like the lawyers, the common man on the street should also say yes, in this particular case, justice was done. Not just the litigators and the litigants, but the common man, even the taxi driver. I'm talking of even those at the bottom of the pecking order who say yes, in this matter, justice was done. Why did he say that? He said that because when anybody feels aggrieved, when anybody feels injustice has reigned, is on the throne, it could lead to protests. It could lead to anarchy. Those that are leading, the leaders, those who spontaneously react, like the answers, are they all lawyers? You have a few lawyers there. They are not all. But because of the police brutality. OK. Uh, so that we can just wrap up. up. So, Open up, just just a moment, so that we can wrap up. Yeah, you know, we've spent a lot of time here without even knowing. Uh, the election was postponed from last week and is going to hold this week. Do you think the postponement, briefly as, as you can, um, do you think this postponement is a blessing to us or otherwise? <laughs> the governorship uh, and state house of assembly. I don't, I, 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 no, no. For the inspection, I think it will have been postponed for even two weeks. Because it is still within the prescribed time. I think that because it takes time for you to investigate the materials used for votes. Now look at the more than 60, 60, 60 lawyers, you said, according to Peter According to you, Peter has moved in 60 lawyers. Mm. Uh, PDP will do the same. Other parties will do the same. They need time. Now, my greatest worry concerning the inspection of materials is that the courts also allowed INEC to reconfigure the beavers. They would have waited, the beaver, they would have waited until after the inspection to reconfigure the work. When they said, ah, Are you sure that you're not going to tamper with the boats? They said they had a backup, they have a backup, which they never had. On the 25th. You see the controversies. Backup server, which they never had on the 25th. What happened to that backup server that you could not upload? They're going to tamper with this computer. They will tamper with it. I'm telling you, they must have tampered with it. Nigeria don't trust Yaku, Yaku, Mambu, or whatever. They don't trust in it. That man has brought shame or problem to this country. Oh, well. Wow. Imagine how many nations visit Nigeria just to inspect with the idea of the, the innovation of the uh, beavers. But they all left disappointed. Disappointed. If you knew that your beavers, right. why not stop there and then? All and right. The all right. I wish we had more time. We could have uh, gone on and on with this, but uh, this is how much we can take. Uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show uh, this evening. This matter has not ended. We know that we'll still talk about it. But thank you for being a part of the program today. But let me quickly say this. Timmy, can I quickly say this? One minute. Can I quickly say this? One minute. One minute, second, yes. yes. I, I want, I want Yakub Mamou to realize that the election rigging is another form of coup covered up with niceties, and complexities. So what happened on the 25th of February was a coup against Nigerians. Let him go home and let his conscience judge him. 
Okay, thank you, Ibnabo, once again uh, for coming on the program. Well, that was uh, Opunabo Inkotaria uh, joining us. He's a, a human rights activist, and he's been talking about uh, the elections and the actions of the LP. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at our discussion with the vice presidential candidate of the ADC. Stay with us. <laughs>